What's going on boys? Quinn69 here. How are you guys doing today? I'm a little bit excited because today I'm bringing you guys a pretty awesome monk build. This monk build here, I think, is the fastest, you know, T10 speed farmer in the game. Um, you can see here, I just did literally two rifts and I recorded them and um, they were both insanely quick. Both under two minutes and both just really, really quick clears. You can see here, by the gameplay, it absolutely annihilates. Um, the build itself... It's, it's, it's basically it's just stacking the crap out of wave of light damage and a ton of mobility and cooldown reduction. We'll go over how it works and what it does. Uh, it's great for everything except greater rifts. So obviously you're not going to use this in greater rifts. You're just going to use this for speed firing rifts, doing bounties, um, you know, killing key wardens and doing ubers, things like that. Uh, so let's get into it. So obviously we're using wave of light, explosive light. That is just literally giving us a gigantic screen clear AoE. So that's the big red bell that just comes down and destroys the whole screen. It's fire damage, which is great, which means we can use a bunch of items to support fire damage, because fire damage has like, you know, you got all these awesome items to support fire, you know, like Syndicate, Mage Fists, all those juicy items. Um, and on top of that, it's like the best rune when it comes to doing speed farming. Uh, as far as uh, spirit maintenance goes, you can see we've got Mystic Ally, Air Ally. Whenever your spirit's low, you should, I just use it just then. You just right-click your Mystic Ally, Air Ally, and that gives you a bunch of spirit back, as well as the fact that you get, um, you know, passive spirit regen. Uh, then you can see we're using Blinding Flash. We're using the rune that gives us 30% damage, and um, that that basically is on up. Like you can see here, there's 100% uptime. As long as Ingeom is procced, you get a constant 30% damage buff. Okay, that, that damage buff is additive with all your other, you know, wave of light damage, which means it's not really 30%. It's actually more towards, uh, like, a 15% damage buff. But still, it's, it's you know, more damage the better you do. Uh, we're then using Mantra of um, Conviction Annihilation. That gives us 30% movement speed whenever we kill a monster. Obviously, you're killing monsters all the time, so it's up literally 24-7. Uh, we're using Dashing Strike, that's purely there for the movement speed or the attack speed. So I'm using the 20% movement speed rune right now, um, and it's pretty damn overpowered. And then we're using Zephyr on number 4, so you can see there, every time I press it, I get 30% movement speed. And that just means my character can run really, 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 really fast. Um, other things worth noting, uh, depending on what setup you're playing, so I'm running with Wasichian Warguards in my cube right now, instead of using... Uh, Nemesis braces, so you have to swap braces every time you kill a, you know, get to a pylon, so I'm going to get to a pylon, put my braces on, click it, click your Pinto's pride back on. Um, obviously I'm using, uh, you know, Avarice Band, so I'm picking up gold with Boon of the Hoarder, so you have that crazy um, gold pickup radius and globe pickup radius, so that means you can, you know, loot the progress orbs like crazy quick. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much the gameplay, there's really not much more to it. Let's go over the gear, boys. So the first thing you guys are going to notice is the fact that I'm not wearing a set. And you're going to be thinking, is this guy doing crack? And the answer is no, I am not doing crack, boys. If you read this here, this is the Legacy of Nightmares set. And um, the way it works is, while this is your only item set bonus, every ancient item you have equipped increases your damage dealt by 100% and reduces your damage taken by 4%. So... That means as long as you haven't got any set bonuses on, so right now I could have like one piece of a set on and it would be fine, but the second I was to get a second piece, it would then break the Legacy of Nightmares and it would no longer work. So obviously, don't do that. And we have special items that all have special effects that make our character really overpowered. So we're getting a 1300%, you know, 1300% damage increase. OPOP. So you'll notice here yeah, the weapon I'm using is Ingeom. This is crucial to doing speed runs. This allows us to spam dashing strike like f crazy. Um, and this is what, you know, keeps your spirit going because you can then activate Mr. Calais a lot. And it just, it's the key to the build. I mean, all of my speed builds in the past, since this, you know, item has existed, has included this weapon. It's a, you know, a staple item and it's overpowered for doing speeds. Obviously to make it work, you have to kill an elite. And then your cooldowns are reduced by 10 seconds for 15 seconds after killing an elite pack. Uh, okay, this is a new item in in introduced into the game. Uh, a lot of people are thinking this is a seasonal only item. Okay, if you guys don't know, in 2.4 there is no such thing as seasonal items anymore. Uh, you know, when they add items in now, it's just going globally across the game. 
there's no such thing as seasonal items anymore. So this is just a new item they've added into the game. This is called Kairito's Blade. The way it works is, and it increases the damage of Wave of Light by 150% statically, just all the time. And then what else happens is, when the initial impact of your Wave of Light hits three or fewer enemies, the damage is increased by up to 250%. So that just means, when you're fighting a Rift Guardian, you can just wreck it, because you get that extra multiplier on top. So this is a really, really awesome weapon, and it allows you know, us to make the really kind of awesome speed builds with Ingeom. We also then are using Crudus Boots. Uh, this is for the you know the air ally, Mystic ally, air ally. It summons a second ally, so you get two allies instead of one. You can see one, two, and that means you get instead of 100 spirit, you get 200 spirit. Instead of four spirit regen, you get eight spirit regen. OP, OP. Uh, we are then using Hexing Pants and Missy Ann. So your resource generation and damage is increased by 25% while moving and decrease by 25% while standing still. So the trick to this is, okay, so you notice if you watch the gameplay section, if you go back to the start, the way I'm playing this is I only, so I'm running, running, and I drop a pillar. Run, 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 drop pillar. Run, 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 drop pillar. And you'll notice here, when the pillar actually hits, I still have my damage bonus and, um, you know, the regen is going while I'm running. So the trick to this is always be in a mid run when you drop your pillar. If you do that, you get the bonus of the Hexing Pants. If you just like this gameplay, um, you can use like Pox Forts, that's the Poison Pants. You can just use just miscellaneous pants, I could just put Inner's Pants on, if you don't like Hexing Pants. Um, but it is really nice and does complement the build quite nicely, because you can just constantly run around like this, and you know, drop these pillars. And it's, it's really not that bad, it's quite, it's quite simple. Uh, on top of that, we're using a gold wrap. Okay, so this is a combination of items that makes it really overpowered. So on a gold pickup, gain armor for five seconds equal amount to the amount picked up. Um, so obviously in T10, that's a ton of gold uh, because we're using a boon of the hoarder. So this is a level 50 boon of the hoarder. It should be pretty easy for you guys to get a level 50 boon of the hoarder now, as GR50, uh, you know, this section is going to be very easy to get to. So you get your boon of the hoarder, level that bad boy up, and then what that means is. 100% um, chance on killing an enemy to cause an explosion of gold. So you kill an enemy, it pops open with gold. Okay, you then pick up that gold. It gives you infinite armor. So you can see if I was to go into a rift right now. Oh god. So I've still got some juice in here. Fight. Oh. As you can see here, my toughness just goes through the roof. And you become invulnerable. Uh, if you keep killing stuff, it'll just keep going up and up and up you can get it to like billions upon billions of toughness and that just means you are literally immune to damage that's what the gold wrap does and it's overpowered as hell we're then using a syndicate okay syndicate 20 percent fire damage on a chest you can't get that on normal chests and then you also get 30 percent uh, resource cost reduction on your fire skills so you're only using one skill and that is your you know you're only using one damage skill so they say and that is you know wave of light which is fire so you get, you know, 30% efficiency and 20% more fire damage. We're then using Turrican's Gaze. And what you need to make sure is you need to get the new version. You need to get the 2.4 version. Um, so you have to go out and get a new helmet. And you'll notice here, see, increases wave of light damage by up to 150%. As well as the fact that it makes your wave of light range. So you can, like, literally cast this at the very edge of your screen. Like, that is huge range. Um, but yeah, really overpowered helmet, and obviously the reason we're using it is because of the wave of light damage, and then on top of that we get the range wave of light. We're using a white gem in the helmet, just to put that out there. Uh, we're then using uh, corruption shoulders. Your shoulder pads aren't really necessarily that important, so if you just want to use any ancient pair of shoulders, I suggest looking for a pair that looks like this. Cooldown reduction, resource cost reduction, area damage, and um, you can use any shoulders you have. Homing pads are a good option. Um, you know, pauldrons, pauldrons of Zakara, uh, you can just have, like, whatever. I was using it, but at the start, I was using, what, Sun Wuko shoulders. Because I have, like, perfectly rolled Sun Wuko shoulders. So you can literally use whatever shoulders you want. Just make sure you don't complete a set by mistake. Please, dear God, don't do that. Obviously, Mage Fist, overpowered gloves. Mage Fist gives you fire damage on your gloves, and it has an extra affix. It has five affixes on there, so you get fire damage. Uh, I would suggest looking for ones that look like this, except have cooldown reduction instead of attack speed. Okay, we are then using 
Pinto's Pride. It increases your fire skills by 20%. Um, so you get, obviously, all braces have that. But uh, if you look at, down at the bottom, uh, Wave of Light slows enemies by 80%. Okay, that doesn't sound that good. You're like, oh, that's cool. But uh, do you know what that does? That means everything is slowed. The second it's hit by Wave of Light, when things are slowed, Bane of the Trap is procced. Um, because you're attacking a lot of stuff in ranged, you're not going to get the secondary procking the primary. So if you guys don't know the way the Bane of the Trap works, you know, it grants an aura that slows enemies, which procs the primary effect. But also your Pinto's Pride is going to instantly proc, and you're going to have Bane of the Trap up the whole time. And on top of that, it multiplies, it just straight up gives you another 150% multiplier on Wave of Light, just casual as. Yeah, it just increases damage by 150%. That's pretty cool. Uh, we're then using a Hellfire Amulet a again. This is not necessarily, um, you know, 100% you need to have this. Um, you can use whatever amulet you have available to you. Just make sure it's ancient because, you know, Legacy of Nightmares, as we said, only works with ancient items. Um, and Hel Hellfire Amulet is the best for doing uh, this kind of thing. Like, it's for doing speeds, it means you can have the most aggressive amulet on and do the most possible damage output. Um, you want it to be crit crit fire if possible, but crit crit uh, dex is fine as well. Alright, uh, the rings, don't, the rolls you want in your rings, actually, uh, pretty much just straight up damage rolls, and otherwise it doesn't really matter too much, just make sure they're ancient and you got damage rolls. I'm unsure how they roll naturally, but I mean, I would, the probably the best possible rolls would be crit crit cooldown, or crit crit area damage. As far as legendary gems go, obviously we've been over Bane of the Trapped and Boot of the Hoarder. Uh, we are then using Zay's Stone of Vengeance. Uh, so Zay's Stone of Vengeance, uh, you don't really see this in too many monk builds, but because this is technically a ranged monk, um, the way it works is damage you deal is increased by 7.5% for every 10 yards between you and the enemy hit. Maximum of 37.5 at 50 yards. So you can easily hit 50 yards. If you're hitting, if you're shooting your wave of light here, so obviously these little guys come out the side, and they, they can like, they, they spread out, and that goes off the screen. Much further than 50 yards. Um, so you can get the full use out of that, and that is a pure damage multiplier, as is Bane of the Trapped. So these two gems work really, really well together, and it's insanely OP. Um, okay, as far as skills go, we'll go over the runes now. So we're using Wave of Light, Explosive Light. That's just the best room for doing speed farming. It just has crazy AoE. It's fire. Everything's good about that. Mystic Alley Air Alley for the region. We've been over this. Blinding Flash. Faith in the Light. So that means every time you press Blinding Flash, you're just using that on cooldown. That is giving you 29% um, increased additive damage. Obviously, that stacks with all your Wave of Light damage. We have a total of 158% uh, Wave of Light damage. So it's really not, <laughs> you know, not that that effective. But it's still better than uh, anything else. We're then using Mantra of Conviction, Annihilation. That gives you 10% additive damage just constantly. So again, that's just stacking with all the additive damage we already have. So that's not really there. We're using it for the movement speed. So killing an enemy um, gives you 30% movement speed for 3 seconds. If you're playing hardcore, you can totally switch it out to Mantra of Salvation or whatever else you want. If you think you're, you're dying a lot. We're then using Dashing Strike, Way of the Falling Star. Uh, there is two optimal, you can use either Way of the Falling Star for movement speed. This means during Ingeom downtime, you're going to have a lot of movement speed to kind of get to another elite pack. Or if you think you're going to be always killing elite packs, then Radiance is technically better because Radiance gives you um, a lot of attack speed. You know, you get an extra 15% attack speed. And the more attack speed you have, the shorter your animation time of your Dashing Strike is. So it actually allows you to be more mobile and you can actually clear the rift faster. So in the Dream Rift, Radiance is better than Whale of Falling Star. Uh, this is better for redundancy though, I find. And it just means you can be casual and it's still good. We're then using Breath of Heaven Zephyr, so that's similar to, you know, Blinding Flash, Faith and Light. It's like when Ingeom's up, you can just spam this thing. Um, you're not using it for the heal, you're simply using it for the 30% movement speed for 3 seconds. That also works on your allies, so your allies are going to thank you like crazy for having this on. They're going to be like, oh my god, thank you, because you're going to be giving them a constant movement speed increase with the Annihilation and the Zephyr. So this really is amazing for doing group speed runs, so it's really quite overpowered. We're then using Exalted Soul, um, that is for the maximum spirit, so that gives you redundancy, and then 4 spirit regen, so that's really good. We're then using Seize the Initiative, that's for 30% attack speed, so that just reduces animation time, so it means you can wave of light faster, it means you can dash faster, all of that good stuff. 
Then we're using Fleet Footed. This is probably the weakest talent out of the, out of um, you know all the talents here. So if you don't have a Hellfire amulet, then you know you're gonna need Beacon of Yita. So then I would swap that out for Beacon of Yita. Um, or if you're playing hardcore, you can use Cheat Death, uh, whatever. Or I'd probably make sure if you're playing hardcore, definitely put you know actual have Harmony on your bars so you don't die because Harmony is kind of overpowered, guys. Um, and then Chant of Resonance. This is purely there for this Four Spirit region when you have a mantra learned. Um, so that's just four spirit region. Passive region, OP boys, because you need it. Obviously, if you are still struggling with spirit, so I'm running with two passive regions and I've got um, air ally, but say you're having to use wave of light quite frequently and you're not killing monsters fast enough because your damage is too low, um, you can definitely either consider using uh, dropping, dropping Zephyr and picking up Sweeping Wind in a Storm. That's a total viability. You can definitely do that. Or, oh, we haven't gone over the cube yet, but let's go over the cube. Also, um, so right here, this is kind of like the expert build right now. So this is like when you're really, really geared, uh, you can use this setup. I did try doing some speed runs, and I just dropped my, all my paragons off. I just deleted all my paragons, and I, you know, so that means it put me down to like a paragon, you know, 600 level, like at a pleb status. But obviously, I did still have ancient gear. And some decent, you know, level gems. I mean, the rank 70 gem and a rank 92 gem. Uh, which is not really that impressive um, by, you know, patch 2.4 standards. Um, but yeah, and, and I was still fine. But yeah, if you're still gearing, I would probably... So if, if you're not really absolutely destroying the content like I was in the video there, definitely consider swapping this out to the Intense Torch of the Grand Temple. That means you're going to have a lot more, uh, you know, RCR because it reduces the cost of Wave of Light by it to 50%. So you're still going to have the mobility and all that stuff, and it just means you have to spam your Wave of Light a little bit more. But you can, but if you're going for absolute maximum speed, then obviously Envious Blade is where it's at. Because what Envious Blade does, gain 100% crit at enemies at full uh, full HP. So that's really really crazy, and that's what allows me to just, you know, crap on the content. Obviously, because we're using this. You want to prioritize crit hit damage on your gear as much as possible um, because you get so much value because you're literally going around with 100% crit. And if you have a lot of crit damage and you crit every single time you attack, I mean, you can just, you know, one-shot the content. And that's the way the bill works, and that's how you destroy everything. That is why it's called the One Punch Monk because it just one-shots everything, boys, in T10. <laughs> Obviously, in Greater Rifts, it doesn't do that. The dream, boys, the dream. Well, then using with Sitchin Arm Guards, uh, so this is the, you know, if you're actually trying really hard and you want to swap NEMS, if you're a lazy, lazy little rat, so I'm a lazy rat a lot of the time, and I just use Nemesis Braces instead of swapping. That's definitely viable. And the other setup we were trying, which was really quite fun, um, was the Gloves of Worship. So if you're getting good RNG and you're getting lots of shrines, and if you're playing in a four-man group, Obviously, if your friend loots the shrine, you still get the shrine buff for 10 minutes. Some four-man groups, you know, a lot of the times you're not even going to be using NEMS because someone else has already got NEMS on and they're clicking the shrine before you. Uh, and other than saying that, you're going to be at the head of the pack because you're so fast, so I don't know. But definitely, if you're not lazy, Gloves of Worship are also a good, you know, option because then you can still swap NEMS on and then you get the 10-minute shrines. That means you get, you know, Empowered Shrine for 10 minutes, you know. You know, the movement speed shrine for 10 minutes, really quite nice. Or you can use Wissichi and Arm Guards. That means you get like a huge movement speed bonus every time you break something. Obviously, in a group, other people are breaking a lot of the objects, so these are going to be less effective in a group. Um, but in saying that, you have a gigantic AoE attack, which is, you know, breaking everything in sight all the time. So it's, you know, up so much. Then we're using Avarice Band. Oh, there was a bit of a debate. Uh, when we were, you know, deciding what we're going to use for the ring. Um, and on average, this ring will give you faster runs. You might be like, what? How does this give me a faster run than using Convention of Elements? Because Convention of Elements gives me 40% damage increase overall. You know, uh, the reason why it gives you that extra um, clear time is because when you're doing speed runs, a lot of the time you will miss the orbs because monsters drop orbs that give you progression through the T10 rifts. And a lot of the times you're going to miss that, but with Avarice Ban, it's impossible. And also because we're using Corruption, so these are the Crafter's Shoulders, they give you 7 pickup radius. So I think my character is running almost 40 pickup radius. That is huge. That means 
40 pickup radius means my character can pick up gold from like this far. It's just it's ridiculous. And uh, a point of note, this 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 build is also really really good for farming gold. Um, and Everest Band is gonna just reinforce that even more. And you might be like, wait, what's the point of farming gold? It's just pointless. It's not pointless, guys, because there's a thing now called Empowered Rifts. And Empowered Rifts cost gold every time you want to go into the rift. And at higher GRs, when you're farming, um, you know, and you want those Empowered Rifts, that's going to cost a ton of gold. And this build will farm you that gold that you need to do that. Uh, as far as Paragons go, you want to be capping off your movement speed. So f first things first, you're capping off your movement speed. Obviously, I have... Um, I hope I get it right. Yeah, I got 12 in my boots, so I want 13 in my Paragons. You can get a maximum of 25. Then you just want to cap off maximum spirit. Oh, God. Cap off max spirit, and then you just want to go full dexterity from there. That's going to take ages. Uh, and then as far as uh, offense goes, you want cooldown reduction, crit hit damage, crit hit chance, then attack speed. You want As far as defense goes, all resist, armor, life percent, life regen. As far as utility goes... Resource cost reduction or area damage, they're both pretty equal. I'd say RCR would make the game, you know, it would be more smooth. The gameplay would be smoother like this, and then area damage, then life on hit, and then gold find. And that's just, you know, adds on to, you know, that farming gold for all the empowered rifts. These are the empowered rifts right here. It's costing, that's like costing 300 million gold, which is insane amount of gold. So that, that is going to help you farm it. But otherwise, guys, that is the One Punch Monk. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the guide, and hopefully you're going to enjoy the spec. Until next time, peace the hell out, and have a good one, boys.